I think it's time we need to talk about these two Suicide Squad movies. Now, before we get into a heated conversation in the comments, let's remember we're all our own unique human beings with our own opinions, and that's okay. So don't be hating too hard on me or anybody else if they just so happen to have a different opinion than you. So, all that said, let's talk about why I think the 2016 Suicide Squad movie is significantly better than the one we got in 2021. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about in this video is the time frame in which the 2016 film was released, because I think that is very important. At that time, we were smack in the middle of the MCU IV drip, getting new Marvel movies all the time. Most people enjoy those movies, and I believe they become heavily accustomed to the style, approach, and the feel of a Marvel movie. And over on the DC side, we were all very familiar with the Nolan films in Batman Begins, Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises. Now, those did come out quite a few years before the 2016 Suicide Squad, but I do believe it shaped the opinions of many people as to what they expect out of a DC movie, particularly one that includes the character Joker. And after the Nolan films, there were a couple other DC movies, and one that came out just before the Suicide Squad was Batman vs Superman, which was relatively well received. I'm starting the video with all of this information because I do believe the mindset of the audience was a major contributor to the response that this 2016 Suicide Squad received. I'm confident if you go back today and give this movie another shot, you may just feel differently. Especially if you're like me and found the 2021 Suicide Squad to be a largely mediocre film. Alright, getting into the meat and potatoes of these movies, I'm going to start talking about the story first. Now, essentially, they used the same formula in the 2016 movie as they did in the 2021 movie, which is, of course, Amanda Waller needs to form Task Force X, which is made up of a squad of supervillains from the DC universe who are tasked with world-saving missions in exchange for reduced prison sentences. Now, I feel that the execution of this story in the first movie was much better than that of the second. It was much more engaging and significantly more entertaining for me. Now, I am going to get into the the specific differences of the antagonist later in this video, but I'll briefly say the overall mission of the first one was just much better and the plot was simply more interesting. Saving the entire world from a highly powerful ancient witch was simply a better story to me than going to some tropical island and fighting a big starfish. The entire objective of the 2021 film was just goofy and uninteresting. Gunn's attempt to apply the Guardians of the Galaxy formula to the Suicide Squad was totally understandable because of the success of the Guardians films. However, with these characters and this story, the approach just didn't work for me. So next I'm going to talk about the soundtrack because that's a major contributor to how a movie feels and how we experience a movie. And I feel that the soundtrack of the first movie was just on an entirely different level than the second movie in terms of song choices with each of the scenes throughout the movie. It's really hard to go wrong with songs like Sympathy for the Devil, Fortunate Son, and Without Me. Subjectively, I just preferred the song choices better in the 2016 movie. I feel that they worked a lot better for a movie like this than what we got in the 2021 film. All right, I'm gonna move into the characters next. And this is where there's probably gonna be a lot of division amongst the people who enjoyed the first movie and the people who thought it was trash. I personally loved Will Smith as Deadshot. Will Smith, as always, was exceptional. I had a friend tell me that he felt that the movie intended for him as a viewer to feel sorry for Deadshot. But I really don't think that was the case. I think they were just spending time on character development, which we didn't really get any of in the 2021 movie. So I appreciated the backstory and the approach that they took with the Deadshot character. I also really preferred Margot Robbie's performance in the 2016 film over the 2021 film. Some say that her independence from the Joker in the new movie made for a better performance and experience overall, but I disagree. The origin story, the relationship, the heartbreak, it all made the role so much better in the first movie. For me, I cared more about her as a character because of the depth of the character in the movie. In the second one, she was just there. And there were really lame characters in both movies. In the 2016 one, though, I didn't feel like one of the most lame characters was part of, like, the primary unit. In the second one, that was that polka dot guy. I absolutely hated that character and really could have done without him. 
I get that it was supposed to be funny. He was part of the whole comedic formula of that film, but it just didn't work for me. I also loathed Savant, TDK, Javelin, and the Weasel characters in the second movie. They were just too stupid to be enjoyed for me. And in the 2016 film, the characters I just didn't care about were Boomerang, Katana, and Slipknot, but they didn't seem to be as negatively impactful to the film as all of the terrible characters in the second movie. All right, and then in each movie, we just have this super weird character. With the first one, we have Killer Croc, and with the second one, we have King Shark. Both were shallow characters. No water pun intended there. But Croc was introduced and portrayed better than King Shark. With Croc, we actually got a little bit of a backstory, a little bit of character development, understanding of who that character was. And with Shark, we were just introduced to him like in a prison yard reading an upside down book and was just like, hey, this guy's an idiot. And that's the role that he played the whole movie. Again, it was supposed to be funny. I just thought it was stupid. No character annoyed me more in the first movie than Rick Flagg. He is actually the only character that I liked better in the second movie than in the first movie. I feel like Joel Kinnaman was overplaying the character in the first one. He really laid on thick that Southern accent in the first movie. He was super intense and combative and disrespectful to the Suicide Squad members in the first one, using them more as like pawns in a game. Whereas in the second one, it felt that he was part of the unit and a leader of the unit. And that part of the 2021 film worked better than how they approached that character in the first movie. So probably the most confusing thing to me about the 2016 film is all the hate towards Jared Leto and his performance as the Joker. Sure, it seemed a little bit over the top, but this is the Joker we're talking about. So ultimately, I think Leto did a fantastic job. I really can't understand the hate that he got. I think everyone needs to stop expecting a Heath Ledger Joker because we're never going to get that again. And I think this is a problem with the fact that this came out in 2016. I mean, Heath Ledger's Joker was several years before Leto's, but leading up to that film, that was the most recent experience the majority of us had had with somebody playing that role. So I think if you can overcome those expectations and stop expecting a Heath Ledger Joker, you might just see the great performance that we got out of Leto in that movie. Okay, let's talk about the antagonist in both of these movies. The Enchantress was about 1,000 times better than Starro. Interestingly, in both movies, they took the same approach of the antagonist essentially infecting soldiers to become a part of their army and go fight for them. The 2016 film just did it better. The zombie-like soldiers that were fighting for the Enchantress were a little bit scarier and less silly than those soldiers with starfishes on their face that were fighting for the real big starfish. For me, this was the primary differentiator between the two movies. I could not enjoy the second movie because it's a freaking starfish that releases little miniature starfish out of its armpits to go infect soldiers and then they got starfishes on their faces to go fight for them and it was just so ridiculous. Now I will say in the 2016 movie the way the Enchantress enchanted the soldiers was really funny. I remember actually laughing out loud the way that she did it. She's casting this giant spell to try to take over the whole world but every so often they bring a soldier to her and she turns around and kisses them and is like you fight for me now and then she turns back around to doing her thing and throughout the movie there's like hundreds of these soldiers so I'm like is this lady just like making out with a bunch of people people to turn them into these things and just getting interrupted like every few seconds. So sure, that was silly, but I liked it better than the armpit starfish thing. Had the 2021 film done literally anything other than the starfish, I might have actually enjoyed that movie. Okay, so those are my main takeaways from the two Suicide Squad films. In my initial video on the 2021 Suicide Squad, I rated that movie as two stars. Put a lot of thought into that. I'm actually going to downgrade that to a star and a half. I just really hate that movie. The 2016 film, I'm giving it three stars. Mind you, three stars does not mean I think that this is an amazing movie that everybody should watch. To me, three stars means I watched it, I enjoyed it, it didn't make some profound significant impact on my life, but it was an enjoyable movie. What do you think after hearing my thoughts? Were you already thinking along the same lines as me, or do you think I'm a crazy person? After seeing this video, will you go back and give the 2016 film another shot? Comment below, let me know your thoughts. Thank you for being here with me. We'll see you in the next one.